Well, the automatic stay isn't really going to affect an adversary proceeding that's pending in the bankruptcy case. What the automatic stay does is it stops all action by creditors against the debtor, against the debtor's possessions, and against the bankruptcy estate that's created when the debtor files the petition. That means that once the petition is filed and the automatic stay is triggered, creditors can't contact the debtor, can't even send him bills, write him letters, him, her, it, um, can't uh, repossess assets, can't foreclose on uh, real estate, and any lawsuits that are pending come to a screeching halt. But all of those lawsuits are pending in some other form. An adversary proceeding is the term we use to describe a lawsuit in the bankruptcy court. So if somebody initiates an adversary proceeding in the bankruptcy court, whether it's a trustee or the debtor or some creditor, the automatic stay doesn't stop that. Instead, it puts the matter before the bankruptcy judge to adjudicate the matter. So as a result, um, uh, the automatic stay really doesn't have any bearing on pending adversary proceedings in the bankruptcy court. Now, one little bit of a wrinkle, you could conceivably have a situation where the debtor files the bankruptcy case, and there was a, an adversary proceeding filed in a completely different bankruptcy case that was included the debtor in this bankruptcy case uh, as a defendant. Well, in that situation, that adversary proceeding would be stayed because it's an action against the debtor that isn't being conducted in that bankruptcy case. In that situation, the def uh, plaintiff in the other bankruptcy case might file a motion for relief from the automatic stay and ask the bankruptcy judge in the debtor's bankruptcy to lift the stay so that the case can be continued in the other bankruptcy case. But that would be a very unusual thing to happen. But generally speaking, adversary proceedings are under the authority of the bankruptcy court. So uh, that isn't a, uh, stayed. There is an interesting wrinkle that I should mention. Uh, perhaps I'm giving the game away to any creditor attorneys that are listening. When the debtor files a bankruptcy, as I said, that triggers the automatic stay, which stops all collection actions against the debtor, including maybe a pending lawsuit in the California Superior Court. Well, uh, suppose the creditor thinks, you know, I've got a good claim here and that debtor committed fraud. Well, the creditor can uh, ask the bankruptcy judge to lift the stay so that uh, the creditor can conclude the action in the California Superior Court. And the judge will probably uh, grant that motion for relief from stay unless it's a brand new uh, case that was just filed in the superior court, in which case the judge might say, well, why don't we uh, hear it here in the bankruptcy court? But even if that creditor wins in the California superior court, if the debt is dischargeable, the debt's still going to be discharged. So it'd be a, a, a pyrrhic victory to win in that state court action. Well, wait a minute. What if the debt was incurred through fraud? That is not a self-executing non-dischargeability category. The creditor has to initiate an adversary proceeding in the bankruptcy court and get a determination that that debt really is non-dischargeable. And if it doesn't do that, even if it wins in the superior court, it loses in the big picture because a fraud debt will be discharged unless the creditor successfully challenges it. There are a couple of others that fit into that category, debts that are the result of a breach of a fiduciary duty, and debts that are the result of doing willful and malicious harm to a person or property. That third one is a little different in Chapter 13 there. It's just willful and malicious harm to a person. In any event, uh, the long and short of it is, if all we're saying is we've got a bankruptcy case, and there's uh, in that uh, case, somebody files an adversary proceeding, the automatic stay will have no bearing on that particular action.